No, I, I'm sure I like it. Um, I was talking about with Alex that we're in this like there's so much LGBTQ, LGBTQ content out there. Um, for instance, the most recent thing to hit was Red, White, More of Blue, uh, with a very cliche but very fun uh, film. Is this what progress looks like? Getting our just basic rom com? Huh. Um. I don't view media and LGBTQ progress necessarily like in the same conversation. I think the more LGBTQ plus media, the more opportunity there is to show the breadth of this community. But like, I don't look at this this film as a win for our community. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I am glad that rom coms can be you know given this styling. Right. Um, and I say more. Of it. You, you like the movie though. I love the movie. Yeah. I mean, it was good. It's, I mean, in real life, if the first woman president let her bisexual Mexican son host a party in the White House lounge, be impeached the next day. But you know, you gotta suspend disbelief a bit. It was fun. Um, but with LGBTQ content, like we, I guess when you kind of answered that, like we've had Pose, which is much a little more niche, and we have this now. Like, is that is that just what? It's good to get both the, the content that's more kind of made for our community that only like maybe we understand more, and then we have the the, the bigger, broader content like Red, White, Royal Blue. Yeah, I mean, you spoke about this earlier when everything sort of ultimately comes down to bottom line. So I think the more we can train LGBTQ plus consumers to consume, talk about, spend their money on LGBTQ plus content, the more of it that will exist. Right. Okay, I gotta ask. And just like that. <laughs> so I watched, and there were moments in the beginning when I was screaming, why am I watching this? And then like midway through, I was like, oh my God, I love watching Charlotte like deal with her kids and and start her job again. And I'm like, I, am I back in? Is this show good? Is it bad? And you talk on your podcast like, no, you wouldn't say it's good, but that's okay, right? Like, what's the purpose of it just like that, you think? I mean, I know it's a big question, but it's not a good show, but we still like that it's on, right? I do think it's a good show. Okay. I, I would argue that it's a good show. I would argue, I, I don't, okay, so I would say that what I am drawn to is like conversations, right? We're talking about The White Lotus earlier, we're talking about Jury Duty. Jury Duty was a huge conversation starter. And just like that is like an undeniably fascinating anthropological piece of culture that has sucked in so many different people. And like, dislike the show, who cares? But like, you probably have an opinion about whether Carrie should wait five years. For <laughs> oh my God. And I feel like the kid, has, this kid took shrooms and he's like, I can't see you anymore. I'm like, what? Fuck Wyatt. Um, but honestly, Fuck that kid. He was an asshole at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think ultimately I like television that starts conversations. And I just like that, did that, you know, I was gonna say scene to scene, I would say like line to line. And that's what I like in my television. I so, but in the is it a good or bad show? Uh, I mean, murky. But like, if the continuum, I'm gonna right. swing more towards good than bad. Um, you wrote in your newsletter the the writer of Sex and City, the book, kind of said that uh, the characters are becoming more like the actresses than than the characters they were in Sex and City, in particular, Miranda um, and Carrie and Carrie. Yeah, no, totally. So, do we even? think it's canon. Like, when I did that man on the street thing, so many young people, Sex and City, Sex and City, Sex and City, and they were like, I'm not watching just like that. Like, they, they both exist in the same reality, yet, like, one can just ignore them just like that. Uh, I think it's too early to tell if it's canon. My instinct is to say it doesn't meet the mark of canon, <laughs> but I'm also really glad it exists. I'm glad that in 2023 I'm able to see Carrie, Charlotte, Miranda, and Samantha on my screen, um, and I think that's a net win. Right. Is it canonical? No, but I don't think everything that I enjoy needs to be canon. Right. How did you feel about the Kim Cattrall? Who I'm so happy I'm blocked you. That was a historic day. Thank you. How did you feel about the, the cameo? Uh, I am glad that it happened. I think that, you know, ultimately what we, the fans, want yeah. is something that we will never, well, not, well, excuse me, not never. <clears throat> I think what we want is something that's near impossible, and I appreciate all the sources, like the sources that came together to make this moment happen, and it was 74 satisfying seconds. Right. <laughs> Shay Diaz. I, 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 like, her stand-up sets, their stand-up sets, their stand-up sets, I apologize, their stand-up sets, the Uber joke, like, are the writers just like that trolling us? Like, are they in on the joke? Because that, when she does the, I took an Uber to the bathroom in LA because everyone drives, I mean, like, this is, uh, this is, this is demonic. I mean, this is not real, right? Is, 
What do you feel like about the character of Chase Diaz? Like, where does where do they go from here in season three? So I think it's important to separate Che Diaz and Sada Ramirez. Sada Ramirez is an incredible Tony Award actor who hopefully will do more musical theater in their in their career because they are very good at it. So I think sometimes it gets conflated with people's disdain for this character. I think sometimes people misdirect it at the actor occupying the role. I think Che is a character that doesn't fit in the show. Yes. Just like that. Um, but like cringy comedians exist. They've not been present here tonight. These comedians have been amazing. Iconic, amazing. Yeah. True. We book well. No, cringy comedians exist, and not all characters are meant to be beloved. I would say I think there's a dissonance between people, the fan fans' reaction to the character, and the writers' room. But I also appreciate the fact that they were like, "You don't like Che? We're gonna, right. you know, do even more of this." I think oh. that that's fun. No, it's kind of iconic just to double down and like fuck you guys. Yeah. Right. Now I'm curious, like, does Che come back for season three? If so, where do we go from here? What do you hope for season three? That's a good question, Samantha. Yes. Uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar returning. Oh yeah, I guess she was, yes, yes. Yes, she was. I would like to see more guest stars from Sex and the City, yes. characters that we love make their way over to and just like that. I feel like I don't need like the Aidens, I need more like niche characters like John Slattery's politician that tried to Of keep course. Us. Yeah, love that. Um, oh, and you, your interaction with Sarah's Park with the cat, I mean, iconic. Um,